We're now to the symbol to FFT sub VI, and because it's a little complex, uh, we're going to go ahead and just look through what's already here rather than build it block by block. Uh, by now, you should be able to look at what's on the screen and be able to confidently build it um, since it mainly consists of basic lab view functions and, and libraries. Um, in addition, this sub VI is available for download on the CNX module so you can feel free to download it and edit it and, and explore it uh, as much as you like. So it, it looks like there's a lot going on here but there's actually not too much. Uh, the biggest thing is we're going to be placing each of our complex symbols into um, FFT bins that are going to be specified by just single samples and then the only real trick is how many zeros do we pad in between the positive and negative frequencies in order to satisfy the Nyquist rate specified um, as well as the fundamental frequency that the user is choosing. So let's uh, actually kind of work backwards here. Um, first we have the inverse FES Fourier transform function um, and you can easily find this in LabVIEW's built-in library. The only important thing is to make sure that it is one-dimensional and complex. Um, and this is because we're in general assuming no kind of permission symmetry and we're going to be doing quadrature multiplexing to the intermediate frequency and so it's okay if we have positive and negative frequencies that aren't exactly correlated. Uh, so in other words the fundamental frequency and the negative fundamental frequency are two individual subcarriers independent of one another. Um, when we come to this block here we're essentially taking in the positive frequencies padding with a number of zeros and then the negative frequencies and this is because we've chosen false for our FFT shift and so the spectrum starts out with the very first sample being DC and then the positive frequencies for the first half and the negative frequencies for the second half. Uh, the only sticking point here is we're going to keep our DC offset that we specify separate and this will become apparent when we get to some of the later sub VIs as to why we want to do this. Um, so for now what we do is we, we put a, a zero instead. The logic over here is simply to determine if we have an uh, even or odd number of subcarriers. If we have an even number of subcarriers, then we'll go ahead and inject whatever carrier symbol that the user um, would like to inject. And we do that simply by routing that to the DC offset. And uh, all of the first half of the parallel symbol in will go to the positive frequencies. However, if we do have an odd number of subcarriers, we like to discard the carrier symbol and at the DC offset instead put the odd subcarrier um, so that we still have symmetry. We have the same number of positive and negative frequencies, but now our odd carrier is, is taking up the, the DC offset instead of the injected um, pilot carrier. So to do this, we simply break split the array here and then the um, first part becomes the DC offset. So the very first element will become the, the odd subcarrier and then the remaining will go to the first uh, the positive frequency bins. And when we split here initially um, note that after we divided by two we rounded um, towards infinity and this way we're guaranteed if it is odd to have the very the, the odd subcarrier in the first group and that's why we were performing the operation up here and the second group is guaranteed to have only the um, the normal subcarriers, not the odd man. Now I encourage you to work through the math down here and read the comments and read the CNX module as to why we inject as many zeros as we do uh, but for right now take it at face value uh, we, we do the math here and then we just use the initialize array specify complex zeros and um, the number specified by this equation over here and then we place that in the middle of our uh, build array function here. Keep in mind that when the build array function comes out it may not look like this and so you'll need to right click and choose concatenate inputs. After that the only thing left to do is to convert the DC offset to the appropriate value if we were to place the carrier symbol or the, the odd subcarrier in the FFT bin and then take the inverse fast Fourier transform, 
the DC offset wouldn't exactly be proportional, or excuse me, uh, equivalent to the value placed. So if you put 5, in other words, you're not going to get a DC offset in the time domain of 5. It's actually going to be 5 divided by the D to A rate. And so that's why we perform the scaling here before we output the DC offset. And that's all there is to it. I know there's a lot going on here, so I encourage you to download the module, play around with it, write out some of the math equations, uh, read the comments um, in the in the VI itself, and uh, go through the CNX module in detail, and also check out the example we're going to do next. If you have any additional questions, go ahead and email the author, and he'll be happy to address any of your questions.